Okay, got it. Hi guys, welcome back to Cupcakes and Protein Shakes. I am your host, Savannah. We're sitting down with a fellow athlete today. I'm very excited to have her on the show. So we're going to get to talk a little bit about her, her journey. She's been through some things and she's going to share you all these insider tips. So welcome to the show. Tell me your name and where are you from? Hi, um, <clears throat> Devin Trotsky, and I'm from the Napa area in California. Okay. Amazing. Well, welcome to the show. I'm excited to chat. Like, tell me where you are at now. Are you off season? Are we prepping? What are you doing right now? So I'm currently smack in the middle of my growing season. My uh, competition season ended mid-July. So we're like kind of in the middle of growth, like after reverse um, I was told that I needed to put on a lot more muscle in my legs. So that is the main goal right now, just destroying my lower body three times a week. Um, and then the goal is to compete in August of this year. Okay. Amazing. So, so tell me what mm -hmm. division and what league do you compete in? Uh, what division? Yeah. Um, so my first show, well, I compete in bikini and my first show, I was only going to do like true novice and novice. Um, but I have some friends who are seasoned competitors and they were like, girl, just do it. Like, just, just go for open. Like, just like, what's the worst that could happen? Um, you know, you look great. Like you've made a lot of progress. Just try it. So I actually did true novice, novice and open, um, came in second in my class for all three and then I did a second show five weeks later and um obviously did novice and open and came in third in and my was class it, was this all last year yes yeah so last year was my first season last summer mm -hmm. before you started prepping like when did you get introduced to the sport of bodybuilding or like what was your fitness background did you ever do sports growing up Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's been a long process to get to where I am. Um, I, I grew up a competitive dancer, so I actually started taking dance classes when I was four years old. Started competing, yeah, started competing uh, competitive, obviously competitively um, in sixth grade all the way through college. Um, I ended up on like a I switched to like a hip hop studio, a professional hip hop studio in high school. And that was super intense, like eight hour days, you know, being there until like 1 a.m. sometimes. So very competitive. Um, and then in college, I just kept up with the dancing. Uh, and I was on a team in college as well. I started exercising on my own in like ninth grade. Uh, in addition to the dance stuff, um, I had a coach who was super into fitness um, I wouldn't say her influence was very healthy, um, kind of a stereotypical dance teacher, you know, making comments about your snacks and things. So being on stage, being in front of mirrors my whole life, going through puberty, that's like, that's where the, the feeling of needing to work out came from that sort of place, not from like, I want to get stronger or I want to like, you know, do this for my mental health. I was too young to like comprehend that. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was very much what you might call like a cardio bunny as well, just scared of lifting weights. So I didn't start lifting weights until I was about 19 years old. Um, I went through quite a bit in my college years. I was in a, a very abusive relationship for a very long time. And it just got to a point, um, he I kicked him out. And um, it just got to a point where I was like, I don't wanna feel helpless I don't want to feel like you know this ever again and then also the the self-esteem aspect of it as well it's like I want to like myself I want to feel strong internally so that's when I started lifting and quickly found that it was something that I enjoyed a lot um so moving back home from college is when I really became a gym rat at about 21 years old um and I actually ended up powerlifting for two years oh wow um what year was yeah. this? Uh, I moved home 2018. Okay. Yeah. 18. Yeah. I mean, you've been in 
I guess you've been in some type of competitive stuff since a lot, like your whole life. So it made sense. My whole life. Yeah, it made sense bodybuilding just kind of is like the next step of like your adult life of still being competitive on a stage. You're used to it. You dance on a stage. So now you get to Yes. still be on a stage and work on your body, but it's a different thing. Like there's a lot of, I guess it is very stereotypical because I was in a dance that, um, I don't know. I just like, I feel like they really wanted you like a certain weight or do you ever remember the show? Uh, what was it called? Like Dallas Cowboys or whatever the, the cheerleaders, the Dallas Cowboy cheerleader, whatever tryouts. I remember that show used to be really popular. I don't know if you've ever seen that one. But they would talk about the girls need to be leaner. They need to, you need to tone up your stomach or whatever it is. And so a lot of the girls didn't like, but they would just say that, but they wouldn't give them a how to of here's a healthy nutrition plan to do it. Or here's an exercise routine that we can add to do it. It's like, oh, you just need to look better in your uniform or whatever it is. So did you have that Yeah. switch? It sounds like you had that switch of like you Mm hmm now. prioritize like strength in the gym mm and hmm be strong instead of just like being like lean. Yeah, so just like being super thin or whatever it is. Yeah, I had that switch. Um, like I said, I I got into exercise, like independent exercise, pretty young for the wrong reasons. Um, and it kind of fueled this like bad relationship with food. I think never formally diagnosed, but I definitely had an eating disorder at some point. It's just so common in like the dance industry in general. Um, but yeah, I don't know, like something, something clicked when I was going through it with, with that ex. And like I said, like the self-esteem part of it kind of came through for me. I was like, if I do this for myself, if I get better for myself, pursue this in a different way for my mental health, then like, not only will I be physically stronger and, you know, honestly able to defend myself a bit better, um, but also mentally stronger so that like, I, I, don't, I can live more happily and stand up for myself, you know, in in all other ways, for sure. Yeah. This And is, I'm glad I had that switch. So many people don't outgrow it, you yeah, know? yeah. I mean, like Yeah. a lot of people don't. So, um, I'm so I'm trying to think about this like timeline. -wise. So this is happening 2018 ish, 2019, and then when did the progression of jumping into a prep happen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when, like I said, when I first moved back home from college is when I truly became a gym rat. Um, and I was doing like bodybuilding style training, like on my own, like I definitely hyper fixate my both my dad and I are like the research people in the family. So I was like, you know, on Pinterest, like look, <laughs> looking up exercises or like YouTube and how to do stuff. So I was kind of doing it on my own. Um, and I got pretty lean, actually. Um, I was tracking macros. I learned how to do that. I was actually weighing my food before I even realized that was what bodybuilders do um, in ounces, not grams, but you know. Uh, <laughs> um, but then I got introduced to Um, a powerlifting coach because I was like I want to after like a year of, of working out on my own I was like I want to like I want to be able to bench like I don't know how to properly bench I I want to make sure my squats are good it would be really cool to deadlift like hella weight um, so I got introduced to a powerlifting coach um, Matt and we worked together for like two years um, and this this turns into bodybuilding I swear it was Competing in bodybuilding, I learned about it um, while becoming more a part of the fitness community in Napa. Um, there's a lot of powerlifters here. We actually, I go to a powerlifting gym. It's like a shout out to Power Crush. Um, but so there's just a lot of very serious athletes at the gym where I met. And that's kind of where I got more introduced to it. Um, strength, as much as I loved it. it did not come naturally to me whatsoever. Um, I like, I had to push myself very hard just to get numbers that other people my size get pretty easily. <laughs> but while I was doing that, I was packing on muscle. 
like my coach is like, dude, like you're ripped for not even training in a bodybuilding style. Um, so after hitting just a really long plateau and honestly not enjoying powerlifting anymore, it got to a point where I was like, this isn't for me. Can we switch to a more bodybuilding style just to like, see if I enjoyed the gym again. Cause at that point, honestly, like the gym had become my happy place. I had friends there. Um, it very much became a huge part of my lifestyle. And I had wanted to compete for in bodybuilding for years, but I did powerlifting instead because I knew my relationship with food was not great. Like still, um, And then with my autoimmune disease, celiac, um, and I have SIBO and I'm allergic to dairy, like all these different food things. I honestly was just scared that I couldn't do it. You know, that I would meet with a coach and they would be like, bro, you have too many problems. Don't even try. Um, so I knew I needed to fix my mental health and like, or work on my mental health and fix my relationship with food. I knew I needed Um, to make sure that I was in a good place with my gut health. And it was always just kind of in the back of my mind because I truly didn't think I would ever be able to. But then we switched to this new style of bodybuilding and I was like, hold up, this is really fun. I'm seeing results so much faster than I did when I was trying to power lift. Um, And eventually I kind of as my, my physical health got better and as my mental health got better and I like truly felt like my relationship with food was pretty good. Like, um, I would get anxiety cause it's, cause it's hard having all those, all those factors and then also be like, okay, what can I eat that like, does it make me sick? That also fits my health goals that also tastes good. It's just, it's a lot. Um, So I wanted to make sure I was in a good place first. So I told myself, uh, when I turn 25, I'll like, I'll give myself two, three years. This was a couple of years ago. When I turn 25, I will, you know, evaluate where I'm at. And if everything is aligned and if I've made enough progress, then I have to do it. Um, and so I turned 25 the new year rolled around. I was like, oh, shoot. Uh, I told myself I would evaluate. So I went through all the factors. I asked myself genuinely, do you have a good relationship with food? Thought about it. I was like, you know what? Yeah. Like, I, I feel pretty good. My anxiety is pretty good. Um, you know, we've done a lot of growth there physically in a very good place. Um, I had built a lot of muscle through powerlifting and then just taking the time to build muscle. Um, and then mentally I felt like I was the strongest I had ever been. So I was like, Oh my God. Okay. Well, I guess I have to do it now. And then it turned, it turned into like the best thing that I've ever done. Like I'm, I'm obsessed. I'm in it for, for a while now. Wow. So that was you, a long winded answer. I know. <laughs> I, hey, that, that helps me. So that, I mean, so you've started, you've been thinking about it, like in the back of your mind, like for five mm-hmm. plus years, I mean, something like four years, three years for me. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, pretty I, much. Cause it's a long time. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. But I'm really glad that I did it because now that I'm like throughout my prep, I got even closer with the community that, that is here, that body builds and power lifts. And, um, and I've met people obviously at my competitions that become friends and just like, following more bodybuilders, just really getting into that whole scene. Um, and hearing, you know, talking to people that are like, Oh, like, it's so cool that you did that. Like, I want to look like you. I want to like, whatever. Um, I'm like, it's, it is so much as you know, like mentally, physically, financially, like all of it. And like the advice that I've been giving everyone who talks to me about it is like, I tell them exactly what I just told you. I'm like, ask yourself, give yourself some time to build muscle, but like ask yourself, truly be so honest with yourself. Are you mentally healthy? Is your relationship with food in a good place? Cause if it's in a bad place, it's only going to get so much worse. Yeah. Um, 
So I'm, I'm really glad that I took that time. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't think my prep would have gone as well as it did if I didn't take that time. Like I wanted to make sure that if this is something I pursued that I came correct, yes. like all the boxes checked. I didn't want to just rush into it because I've seen people do that and it's, it's, it can ruin people sometimes, you know? Yeah. So. It can. I'm glad that you took the time. Because like you said, I've, I've seen girls that have rushed into it, that have used, oh, mm -hmm. I'm just going to be a bodybuilder now. And then that is their introduction into fitness. They have no experience. Yeah. They maybe have never even set foot in the gym, never done a cut, never done a bulk, never tracked food. And they immediately sign up mm -hmm. for a bodybuilding show. And then it gets hard. Because prep isn't something that you just do. Like it's something that yeah. you have to want to do, understand mm -hmm. what the cost is, the mental cost, the physical cost. It's not something yeah. that you can just like walk off the street and I'm a bodybuilder now. You, yes, you can. You can, you, everyone starts somewhere. Um, I don't want anyone to be discouraged yeah. not to, because if that's what you need to work towards something, then by all means, mm -hmm. bodybuilder, but have your boxes checked of food mm -hmm. relationship first, because that's such a big tool. Like if you yeah. do not understand how food works with your body, if you haven't spent a month tracking, a year tracking, really, I mean, if you haven't spent a decent amount yeah. of time, like just understanding the calories that you're eating, tracking food, tracking everything, tracking your weights, PRing, like really testing your strength, trying different exercises, like do you even like working out? Yeah. You have to, like, those are questions. Yeah. yeah like, yeah. do you even like working out? Sometimes people don't really like actually yeah. lifting weights, which is fine, but you're not going to know that until you try it. So until you definitely tried it, mm -hmm. did your strength training and then bodybuilding training and loved it. So it was like, okay, now what's next? And that's great because bodybuilding preps like, are hard. They're so hard. They're so hard. And <laughs> If you come into it knowing everything, you are fully researched. You sounds like you love, re mm -hmm. I love research too. So I did the same thing. I didn't yeah. understand it. I didn't, I wanted to know everything before I went into it. I needed a coach. I yep. needed to train. I needed to know exactly how the process worked and follow everyone and just be like, okay, just what is this? What does it mean? What, did, what can, can I do this? And it does take some mm -hmm. time. So I do want to jump in to health stuff though, because that's something yeah. that there might be specific athletes, just like you said, you didn't think it was possible for yourself. So how yeah. have you manage, you know, bodybuilding with different things like SIBO, celiac, um, and like recent allergies, like what do you do differently now? Like, how do you prep your food? How do you do it? Yeah. So, uh, previously, like when it was just an idea in the back of my mind and I didn't know what, you know, prep looked like, I didn't know before I did my research and everything and met a coach. Um, you know, I was just like, I, I didn't know what I didn't know. <laughs> and honestly, like what I ate in prep is generally what I ate normally anyways, because I'm so restricted. Um, but it was an interesting, um, first like month with, um, my coach Carrie for my prep figuring out, okay, like, cause she gives me a meal plan. So it was like, okay, can you send me the full list? And I'm like, I know this is necessary, but I'm so sorry. Uh, cause with SIBO it's, uh, it's a, how do I explain it? It's like a bacterial, um, imbalance mm -hmm. basically. Um, so there's, and then you find like what specifically triggers that imbalance. Like if each person is different. So for me, it's like, I can't have beans. I can't have asparagus, which is a big, you know, asparagus, a big bodybuilder thing. Uh, I can't eat pit fruits. I can't have garlic or onions or cashews or, you know, apples. It's just like over time. Cause I was diagnosed, uh, with both celiac and SIBO in high school. So I've had a lot of time to like really dial in what it is. Um, sugar is a huge 
trigger for me. So like peak week, you know, um, I couldn't, she was like, okay, let's test out like three grams of honey or, you know, like uh, 30 grams of banana. And so in my mind, I'm like super paranoid about being bloated. Um, cause I could have for like, I could have a banana today, but if I had a banana today, tomorrow, the next day, it like kind of builds up in mm. my system. So my first peak week, I was so terrified, but also just so deep in the, the trust, the process thing. Cause I knew I had a second show so it's not like my first show was the practice round, but it also kind of was uh, when it came to like, okay, what works for my body? How can we make this work? Um, and then also with the dairy thing, can't have like yogurt, can't have like majority of protein powders, um, stuff like that. So it was just very, very interesting, but it ended up being a lot simpler than I thought it would be, which I'm very thankful for. I, I basically just lived off of different variations of egg whites and different variations of rice. That's yeah. it. Like, really, yeah, like can't have oatmeal because I'm hypersensitive. So like the protein, even in gluten free oats, like it still messes me up. It won't kill me like gluten does, but it just like, I get bloated, I get backed up. So like cream of rice for breakfast and then rice cakes as a snack and then rice for dinner is just like very repetitive um but I, I was okay with it because it took away that um the thinking that went along with planning my foods when I'm when I was on my own yeah. so it was like once she had the full list and we figured it out um like she was like okay like this 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 and this whatever. I was like, I don't have to think about this. You know, am I allergic to it? Will like this certain amount trigger my SIBO? Like it, does it fit my macros? Like, does it taste good? I'm like, well, it's prep. It doesn't really have to taste that good, but like everything else was checked off for me. So I actually like, I was so happy during prep for that reason. Cause I was like, I don't have to think about it. I was just like, I know what I need to do and it's working. And yeah. It's cool because I, I used to be so afraid of like trying new things like in the kitchen. Like I just hated cooking because I was like, I eat the same thing every day. But then after prep, when you're like, you're like really eating the same thing every day, um, towards the end, I was like, dude, I'm so excited to try cooking. I want to try new recipes. Like after I reverse, like um, I got really into like, uh, I was researching like how to bake bread. I was like, I want to make my own bread because like gluten free bread is crap. And so like during my reverse on on some off days, like I baked my own bread and I like made, you know, different recipes. And a lot of them didn't turn out very good because gluten free baking is yeah crazy difficult. Um, But it, it, it made me so happy because I was like, wow, I'm actually excited to be in the kitchen. I'm excited to try new things. And I I like what I eat every day. Like I'm the type of person where I can eat the same thing every day and not get sick of it for a long time. I tell everyone, I'm like, just switch up your seasonings, switch up the sauce. Yeah. So like, I'm okay with that for the most part, but it, it was actually kind of healing to have that mental break, figuring yeah. out what to eat. So then after in my like off season, I feel more inspired to like, make things at home and actually enjoy cooking because I never enjoyed cooking because it was always just a source of anxiety of like yeah. trying to make sure everything was exactly what it needed to be yeah um, I mean, good choice in general I think for a lot of anyone it's what do I eat there's so many different things that are healthy not healthy there's different research mm -hmm. about can't have this can't have that like wherever you go you can find a reason why you should or shouldn't eat whatever you're about to eat. And so that decision yeah. fatigue, I think for a lot of people, it's like they, or even me, it's like, oh gosh, I don't even know what to eat. So let me just go to what's comfortable or something right. that comforts unhealthy food. Cause there's too many things. There's too many healthy things to decide on. I don't know what, mm -hmm. that's why I do like when I prep, I like to have a meal plan. I like to have staple foods. Um, mm -hmm. just so I, don't have that like decision fatigue just in prep all I know yeah. is 
this is what I can eat. This is where I'm going to do this. I have to train at this time. So there's no wishy-washy. Yeah. Like, this is just the plan. That's all I do. I just follow it. It kind of takes the stress off you. I'm very curious how in high school, how did you get diagnosed and what were you experiencing as far as symptoms? Yeah. So, ooh. <laughs> um, high school. So I got officially diagnosed in 10th grade, but I definitely started having the worst symptoms in ninth grade. Um, I actually had a bit of a, like a bit of a delayed puberty almost. Um, I was like barely over five foot. Um, my period was really super inconsistent just no, no consistency at all. And I know that's like kind of normal, but it was like really bad. Um, and, and, and add on top of it, like the fact that I definitely had an eating disorder when I was younger really didn't help with like all that stress on my body. Um, so, uh, ninth grade, I started getting like really bad grains. Um, and I, my depression, like I got diagnosed with depression, like it got really, really bad, which is a symptom of, uh, you know, like gluten, if you're sensitive or have celiac, it can make that like brain fog really, really bad. And it can affect your mental health too. Um, my Nana at the time was working with doctors to figure out her own health problems and they recommended quitting gluten to her and she felt a lot better. Um, so she recommended that to me. And at first it was like, okay, yeah, like, I kind of cut it out, but then also, you know, would go to the coffee shop and get a scone and be like, oh no, it'd be fine. And then realize the next day, holy crap, I made a huge mistake. So after about like six months of like half-assing it, I went teetotal on the gluten. And it it honestly took about another year for me to finally actually feel better. Your gut needs to heal like um, part of how it works is like your your microvilli get trampled by white blood cells trying to attack the gluten because, you know, autoimmune disease, it thinks it's whatever. So uh, it took a while for that to like fully heal. And that's around the same time that I got diagnosed with the SIBO because you can develop SIBO um, from, you know, instances like that, like my gut health was super messed up. I was undiagnosed for so long um, that that kind of ended up becoming like a comorbidity alongside with the celiac. Um, also 10th grade quit dairy um, because I realized every time I ate dairy, I felt like crap. I was just getting very in tune with my body. I was like, okay, now I know how this feels. Like I didn't realize how shitty I felt until I didn't anymore. Like one day I opened the the curtains and I was like oh my god the sun is shining I can I can smell the flowers so I was figuring out like oh that's what it feels like when I eat something that my body doesn't like um so I quit dairy and I actually lost 10 pounds in a week the week From that dairy? I quit dairy I yeah I'm like my theory it was just water weight it was just like inflammation I was about to say, in that's my body so much inflammation like that's a lot of inflammation Yes, a ton of inflammation. Like literally, um, I just the reason why I weighed myself to check is because I looked like after a week of no dairy, like completely. Um, I looked in the mirror and my face was like visibly thinner. I like puppy. and I was like, oh. yeah, like and I, if you look at photos of, of yeah. me from high school, like my face was so just right. like my first driver's photo was like people don't think it's me. Like they yeah. would look at my photo and be like, that's not you. Cause my eyes were puffy, everything. So I weighed myself and it was 10 pounds. Crazy. Oh so crazy. yeah. Yeah. So moving forward, it was just, um, a process of figuring out what gluten-free products aren't crap. And I, I very much became that kind of person where, you know, people ask me like, oh, well, don't you ever just want to have like a bite like of the pizza or like the cake or whatever? I'm like, no, because genuinely I felt so I, I can, I can curse. Right. I didn't ask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I listened to the podcast and I, I remember people cursing and then 
I meant to like double check with if you changed anything, whatever. So oh, I didn't realize. Go for it. It doesn't matter. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Because I curse like a sailor. So I've been <laughs> trying my best. Yeah. Um, I like yeah. tame it down myself. That's another topic. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah. So where was I? Oh, yeah. I just like, it's not, I didn't, I, I felt so shitty before. And I didn't realize how shitty I felt. So when people ask me like, oh, do you ever, you know, cheat on the day, whatever. I'm like, fuck no, I don't. I don't, A, I don't have time for that. Your girl has multiple jobs. And like, B, like, just, I'm, ter I'm, ter I'm genuinely terrified of feeling like that again. It was so bad. It affected my physical health, my mental health. Like, I had joint pain. I had exercise used asthma. Like acne through the wazoo like yeah just uh it affects everything it's so crazy um it's it's crazy to yeah. me so i probably competitors and just girls out there that are suffering and i know and i yeah. know that there is i know for a fact like there's so many girls that have stomach issues so many mm -hmm. no like mm -hmm. and it could be it's what you're eating what you put in your and your gut, it's just, I've cut out dairy. I've cut out uh, whey for a certain amount of time um, throughout the year. Like, mm -hmm. kind of like add it back in and there. But the best is when I don't have dairy, when I, I'm in the mm -hmm. middle of prep and I don't have gluten, my skin looks so mm -hmm. much better. My digestion is on point. There's nothing weird. Yeah. And I feel the, fo I think the focus that I feel in prep when I do have a more restrictive diet, even though it's kind of crazy, do you just feel very mentally clear? It's like, you're basically eating like yeah. vegetables, rice, maybe a little bit of meat here and there. And that's, yeah. that's kind of it. And you do feel like mm -hmm. so much better. Um, uh, I didn't have celiacs or anything, but I had thyroid issues, which you don't know mm -hmm. how bad you're feeling until you, I had to go on medication and yeah. Like the second you start to feel that relief, you, you it's like a, a literally the day is brighter, colors are brighter, everything yeah. tastes better. Exactly. You're happier. You can walk around. And you're like, yeah. there's a not a black cloud over my head, and it does make a difference. Yeah. Really like, oh my God, so cool. yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. like, if you just I don't totally feel get good in your body every day, like you might not even know that you're carrying ten pounds mm -hmm. of information. You might not know. Right. And you just are just so yeah. used to it that that's just how I feel. And you think it's normal. Yeah. And it's not normal. Yeah. You're like, oh my God, I'm getting migraines every day. It's like, well, well damn. Yeah. But like there's there's a reason why. And and I realize it's migraines sometimes, like that's it just happens. But in my case, like it was very much the gluten. Like I was leaving school damn near like three, four times a week. Cause I just couldn't function. It was so bad. And then I would go, you know, lay in bed and then go to practice from like five to 11 PM and then just repeat rinse and repeat table. So I'm really glad I, I figured it out. I'm, I'm glad I, my parents were, were there to help me figure it out. And you figured it out yeah. relatively young, which is nice that it, it wasn't something like a lifelong journey. So now that you can kind yeah. of know, I'm going to feel good. I'm going to continue to prep because it makes me feel good and help other people feel good. Um, mm -hmm. I know like, it, so you said what, two shows so far or three? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the first show you ended up winning, right? No, I got second in my class. Okay. Um, I, I'm high, like be competitive so every everyone's like oh my god you got second like da, da, da. I'm like no I only got second yeah okay okay so going yeah. into actual it's prep itself though for that first time mm -hmm. you said it wasn't that hard but was there any difficult times between the first two preps at all uh yeah so so like I said being in prep and being on such a, rest a restricted but a planned out diet like like you said that like mental clarity I was telling people like I feel like a goddamn monk out here like 
because uh one of my things I don't I don't run <laughs> so I would go I would like do my cycle classes to like get a lot of calories in but I would go on walks so it was like I'm outside I'm like walking I'm listening to my podcast I was listening to this podcast and like uh you know doing all of that so it felt really great um and I think it was also really good for my gut because you know just it is I wasn't a big vegetable eater before um and then you know and prep your taste buds like change I'm like oh my god this bell pepper is so sweet it's amazing oh my yeah there's times I have distinctive memories where I would go to the store to get like a red bell pepper as like a treat yeah I would cut it up and I would eat it snack and I would just be like oh it's juicy it's crisp this is so good and people are looking at like like, super cold like a super cold bell pepper out of the out of the fridge like just a little bit of salt yeah I mean your prep or your prep taste buds do change and your cravings do change it's like suddenly I call it my food bar like my level like my food bar is really low right? Like nothing, it doesn't take a lot to impress me after at the end of yeah. the prep, if you give me like a vegetable I haven't had a long time, oh my gosh, that is amazing. Or like something like yeah. an extra seasoning or a really cool sauce. I'm like, wow, yeah. is this gourmet for me? I'm used to eating the blandness of the bland. So any type of little yeah. flavor change or just some type of fun vegetable, it's, it is, it's you're just like, wow, I feel like I've been reset. So, you know, anything like extra yeah. feels extra nice. Um, yeah. But as far as like, yeah, as far as like challenges go, um, there, it was like easy just because for me, I was like, this is a relief. I mean, this is great. But uh, there were, there were some times where like my gut was like, skirt, like, oh no, what are you doing? Uh, there was a period of time about, two months into my prep where I was like constipated for like a solid 10 days um but I know that's actually not that uncommon so I don't attribute that to like my celiac or anything I think my body was just unsure of what was happening and trying to figure it out um to, for me for me I didn't really start like losing my mind or have issues until in between my two shows because there was a five week gap. Um, I originally we were like this, this gap could be good because we can take, you know, feedback from the first show, do like a little refeed, you know, kind of like work on some things, get there. But, uh, that's, that's when things started to get really difficult. My, my gut health was great. Um, I like my entire prep, I was to the gram the entire time like I never not once had did not have the desire to like go off plan because like I'm very I'm I'm a tunnel vision person so I'm like if I'm doing this I'm fucking doing it um so that in between the difficult thing was the the cold so this is another it very kind of weird interesting thing that my body does I would years ago now I started getting hives and colds it's really dumb and I was a I worked as a drive-through like barista so like I would have to work outside in the middle of winter and like layer up like leggings pants whatever whatever so when uh speaking with other bodybuilders before competing just to get advice and you know whatever like I had a, a few be straight up like I don't think you should do this because if you get hives when you're cold, like you have, like, I have an EpiPen in case I get like pushed into a pool or stuck in like, you know, the freezer at work. Um, when I drink like a, like a blended protein shake or anything, ice to my throat closes up. It's very weird. And it came out of nowhere, like three years ago. And the allergist was like, yeah, well, you already have an autoimmune disease. So like, Ta-da, you've it's just a secondary like it just happens maybe you'll outgrow it maybe you won't so wait there's no I was told there's hey, like no cure to it or like no there's just they just that's no. what they said they just said good luck that was it yeah she was like hey yeah she's like taking an antihistamine like um preventatively so like I literally have some on my desk right now it's just generic like Zyrtec 
stuff like that. And it does help. But when it first uh, like started happening, like I would be laying in bed and like my whole body would just flare up because like my bed was a little chill, like a little chilly. And it, it has gotten better over the years, um, but it still does happen. So I was like, well, I guess like, I still really want to do this. I realized like I have all these food restrictions. I realized that I'm going to be cold and I might end up getting hives all the time, but like, fuck it. I still want to do it. So I did it. And that in between those five weeks is when, like, that's when I was really cold all the time. That's when like, I couldn't walk barefoot because my feet had gotten so thin, like, um, just kind of miserable, you know, started losing my mind. But I found out internal coldness, like chilliness, like from being too lean, um, does not give me hives. So I proved the haters wrong. Oh, they okay. were all like, so yeah, yeah just like, yeah. So I, I learned that. Because of that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Do you, so, but I wouldn't have. Otherwise, do you ever I figured it out. try to test it? Like, do you ever try to make yourself? <laughs> cold on purpose to see if it still happens um so yes and no so like generally no um because it makes my joints hurt really bad as well um like very like I feel like the tin man um when I'm when I get that cold and it's unfortunate that I live in like northern California where I mean luckily it doesn't snow where I live but it's not it's not warm by any means in the winter yeah um so, but it is a fun party trick in the summer. I'll take like a cold can of something because, you know, men, they never believe you, whatever. So people are like, nah, that's crazy. Like, no way. So I'll take like a cold can from like the fridge or something and just put it on my leg for about 20, 30 seconds. And I'll take it off and there's a perfect ring of like raised hive. That it's is wild. Mm -hmm. And like, in the winter, um, like on my face, like my nose and my lips swell really bad. They turn red and they just like my nose, like I look like Rudolph and my ears like burn. It's like, you know, when you come in from playing in the snow and then you're in the hot, like, you know, house or whatever. And like your fingers are like burning. That's what it feels like on my face when it's like 50 degrees. Oh my God. Sometimes. Sometimes like closer to 60, if there's like a cold breeze, it's really embarrassing, honestly. Wow. Yeah. And you so were able, yeah. I think it's, well, I think it's cool that like, despite all of these different things, you still were like, I'm going to do it. I don't care. I think I can do it. And that's great because like every single person has their like kryptonite of why they yeah. shouldn't succeed of I'm short. Mm -hmm. I'm Fall. I'm uh this I'm I have this hard schedule I have kids I have these like any person and every person I'm sure has some type of excuse of silly like anything mm -hmm. but it just goes to show like those are still excuses and if you really truly want it it's like you can you can really overcome any anything like any excuse you believe they're like oh I don't think I could do it because I have all these restrictions like you you really actually can't yeah. Yeah. And that, that is something that I have been like building up to, I think like that, realizing that I've been building up to that for so long from like, you know, um, like getting into weightlifting after, you know, an abusive relationship to like, you know, feel confident into like powerlifting, like, oh, getting under that barbell and knowing that you can fucking lift it or, you know, get out of the hole. And then to, bodybuilding where it's like okay and, I, and I'm not saying like I would do anything recklessly just because I want to like I went to the doctor I spoke to my primary I was super worried she was gonna tell me not to do it um but she was supportive she was like get let's get your blood work done let's make sure you know everything's good because they also tested me for like thyroid issues when we were trying to figure out what everything was and she was like let's just make sure everything's good. So I, you know, talked to my doctor, I got my blood work done. And I talked to my therapist and was like, Hey, like, mental check in, how do you think I'm doing? And she was like, fuck, yeah, go for it, girl. 
self-actualization like she also was like you're you've been building up to this my doctor was like you've been building up to this so even though other people were doubting me I was like okay again checking all my boxes doing my research and just being like you know what if if it goes terrible if it messes up my health if for some reason it's bad like I'm signing I chose to do this and genuinely like it doesn't feel like you can stop anytime when you're in prep but stop anytime you know like I I was like you don't have to do it and if you hate it you don't ever have to do it again let's just see because like why live with regrets and like that that was definitely like one of the biggest things I learned through my prep is like be responsible but at the same time don't let things hold you back and I've always been kind of that person to be like oh yeah like I can't do this because of that but like I'm still gonna pursue whatever like in in the way that I can like I, I may not be able to do it the same way that everyone else does but I can get a very close experience in the way that I can like I'm very like let's move around it over under it um and I've definitely come out way stronger from my prep knowing that and sometimes I have to check myself with in regards to like other people because in my mind I'm like no excuses you can make it happen I'm like well not everyone has that like very intense mentality that I know I have especially after you know a prep like that and going through like all this stuff um I realized that it's a unique experience to yeah. to have the the level of that that I do yeah so what do you want to do with this like it, you're two show deep you're two show deeps mid-off season coming back mm-hmm. in August what is your like short-term plans for show in August long-term plans of like what do you want to do with competing yeah so how do I explain it like genuinely I just you know that feeling where you get into a new situation or like you enter a new space and you're just automatically like this is home Mm -hmm. that's that's how I felt like as soon as I started getting into this so um I definitely want to you know have a great season this year I'm going to do two shows as well uh this year because I, I think it's also the performer in me. I'm like, why would I only wear that suit one time? Hello. Yeah, and I need to be seen after all this work. So I'm going to do two shows. They're only going to be a week apart. I'm not doing five weeks in between. Nice. Um, so that's just my goal. My my goal for this is to take first in my class at at least one of them. I would really love to just at least get into the overalls and see how I place obviously we all want first in the overall so I'm not gonna like you know but trying to have reasonable expectations because I I am natural and I am competing in the open category so I'm like I I want to get as far as I can with that um and then for the future genuinely I see myself uh continuing to do this for a, a while until you know, life changes or priorities of mine change, like it'll grow as I grow. I don't have any hard expectations. Like, um, I have friends ask me like, Oh, dude, like, do you think you want to try to go pro? And I'm like, if it's in the cards, if if I get there, and, and, and I'm like, okay, yeah, like, I feel like doing it, I'll do it. But if I get there, and I'm like, No, I don't feel like doing it, then that's fine, because I'm not putting expectations on it. So I'm, I'm very much a yeah, I'm very much just like lead with my heart. What feels right in that moment is generally what I'm most at peace with. So, yeah, I that's mean, that, my, that's my plan. Like, I love that. Stick it's very with it, but that you're not so tied to end outcomes. You just feel like, I like this. And that's really as simple as it needs to be. You don't have to yeah. have a crazy goal, even though, yes, you, yes you do have like the mini goals of, yeah, I'd like to win. It's not really about that. It is more of a personal 
journey. And it seems like you really like yeah. grasp on to that aspect of I'm better when I do this. I like how I feel when I do this and I want to continue to feel this way. So I'm going to keep doing it. Right. Like, I don't really know what mm-hmm. will happen in the future, but I do know that I love training this way compared to where I was. Yep. I love eating this way. I love feeling good. And that's all I know. And that's really all that you need to know. It's just, again, like you said, if it feels good, like continue to do it. If it doesn't find a solution around it, or if it's something that you want to do, then you can definitely do it. So we're getting close to the end of your episode. Is there anything that we haven't touched on your journey that you wanted to share or just any last piece of advice? Oh, of course. Now I'm like drawing a huge blank. I know. Every time I ask this question, everyone's like, I don't know my whole life. I'm like, are you sure? Um, well, I mean, like I, we, I mentioned it, but just like the, the relationship that I was in, in college, um, if he, it very much convinced me that I was worth very little, if anything, it very much convinced that I was not capable of doing anything, that I would never find meaningful relationships and lifting and like getting into the gym is part of what gave me that strength to leave like permanently. And like I said, finding that self-confidence, finding that like physical, but also mental strength um, and then getting into bodybuilding, despite like all these really random ass health problems, like all together, like the accumulation of, I would say probably the last eight years now, which is crazy to think of this. The main advice I would give is like, don't let anyone tell, you no, you know, like, unless, you know, it's your doctor being like, you will literally die if you do that. Like, obviously don't be stupid. But like, just don't, the advice I can give is try our heart and what's right for you. And like, if you're passionate enough about something, like you can absolutely accomplish it. Like there's no reason in selling yourself short, even if you have health problems, even if someone has convinced you that you can't do anything worthwhile, like um, my life has just changed so much like like a complete 180 I'm the most myself I've ever been in my life since since I started lifting and became a silly little gym rat you know um so I guess that's the advice I could give to people it's like if they're in a similar situation or they're struggling with low self-esteem or you know there's people around them telling them no or you can't or you you know are not capable uh, fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I will always, be, I will always be everyone's biggest cheerleader. Like I'm, I'm definitely that friend that when someone's like, oh, I like, I really want to do this, but I can't. I'm like, why, mm-hmm. why not? Are you stupid? And they're like, no. And I'm like, yeah, cause you're gorgeous and amazing and you're strong and you can absolutely do anything you can because I've seen it for myself. So I'm like aggressively supportive. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> everyone. Love it much if anyone does want to get in touch with you where can they do so yeah my instagram is trosky moves t-r-o-s-k-y and then moves um it's where i put all my like fitness stuff bodybuilding stuff and i i'm actually a dance teacher now so i post like my my students and myself and my sister uh dancing together with our like choreography and stuff so it's just all my movement in one place. Okay, I like it. And final question. This will be an interesting answer for you. Are you team cupcake or are you team protein shake? Okay. I've thought about it. I knew you were going to ask me because mm-hmm. I know you ask everyone. I thought about it. Um, I'm actually team cupcake. Although really I'm more of a cookie gal, but between the two team cupcake, uh, my best friend is a professional pastry chef and she makes fantastic gluten and dairy free treats. Um, so yeah, there's this like honey cake with like lemon frosting and elderberry syrup that I just cannot get in my brain. Yeah. She named it after me actually. It's called the Trotsky moves on her menu. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That is amazing. That sounds really good. Yeah. She's pastry boy. A little shout out for her too. Well, thanks for coming on the show and sharing your journey. So we'll get this up. I think it's a week. 
our March kickoff for some nice motivation mid-season. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. 